Hello everyone. Welcome back to the lecture. So in this lecture, we will try to understand how the eccentric footing uh, design is done. What is the fundamentals behind that? So far, we have understood different types of footing, right? First, we'll try to understand the difference between the eccentric footing and the other footing. So previously, we were discussing the footing and those footings were your concentric footing, or we can call it as a centric footing. That means if this is a footing, the CG of my footing, okay, where the entire load will come, that will be somewhere here. So this will be the CG of the footing. Now I'll place a column over that. So, and if this is my column, so one minute. And if this is my column, the column CG also will match. The column CG also will be here. So what I'm basically trying to tell in case of the footing, so far what we have discussed, your footing CG, if your footing CG is here, your column CG also will be here. So there won't be any eccentricity. In case of eccentric column or in case of eccentric footing, what will happen is, see, if this is a footing, if this is a footing, the footing CG is here, the footing CG is here. Let me go with the circular one. Yeah, the footing CG is here. Whereas my column is somewhere here. My column is somewhere here. And my column CG is here. My column CG is here. So here what is happening here, this particular footing is called as an eccentric footing because your footing CG is here, column CG is here. So it's not matching. So that is why it's called as an eccentric footing. Okay. But here the eccentricity is in only one direction. That means if this is my XX direction, so I'll call this as my XX axis. I'll call this as my XX axis. And this is my y y axis so this eccentricity is only which direction in x axis there is no eccentricity because you see here here the footing cg and the column cg is matching it's falling in the same line whereas you see here here the footing cg is here whereas your column cg is here so this much distance what you can see right this distance so this is the eccentricity what we have understood the difference so here we call that the eccentricity is in only one direction now, sometimes we have a footing where your eccentricity will be in both the direction. Suppose if this is my footing and if I put my column here and if my column is at this corner and if my column is here, now you see, I'll draw the footing CG. My, uh, my footing CG is here. My column CG is here. Okay. And if I draw the line, if this is my XX axis, and if this is my y y axis, now you tell me where is the eccentricity. So next direction, see your footing C G is here, column C G is here. From here to here, there is an eccentricity. Okay, from here to here, from the center of this point to this point, there is an eccentricity. This is along one direction. In the same way, my footing, uh, this thing, I mean uh, C G along the y axis is here. And in the column, it is here. So again, from here to here, we have eccentricity. So here, your eccentricity is happening in both the direction. Whereas here, the eccentricity was only in this direction. You didn't have eccentricity in this particular direction. Understood? So this was a complete understanding about the eccentric footing. Now, so the same thing you can see it here. See, if this is a column and this is footing, exactly it is going to match here. But whereas here, your column is here, footing center is here this much will be a eccentricity. This particular case is this particular case. And if you have a column exactly at the corner, then it becomes a both the both the side you have a eccentricity. This is a complete understanding of it. Now we'll come to the main thing. Why such kind of footings will come into play? The reason is that suppose imagine if this is your plot, what you have, it's a 30, 40 plot. When I say 30, 40 plot, that means this is 30 feet and this is 40 feet. Usually when you have your own plot, People don't want to leave any setback distance. What is setback distance? If this is a plot, usually if you refer the building bylaws and all, it says that you should leave enough, enough setback distance and you should construct your home only in this much space, wherever I have a green space. No, only in this much space, you're supposed to do the construction. This whatever space is left out from here, this particular space, this space, this space, all these are called a setback distance. These things are to be left so that there is enough ventilation. Okay, there is enough ventilation. The pro there is a proper flow of you know air in your building, and you have a proper area setback distance so that you can move around and all. So that is what the building bylaw says. 
but what people do lot of the people in the small cities and all what they say what they tell is like see any of this entire plot is mine why i want to waste this plot and all so what these people do is whatever is a plot size no if this is a plot size they start their construction from this end only i'll draw it i'll draw it like this they'll start their construction from this end only they'll say no no i'll not leave any setback distance i'll start my construction from here only this is entire plot they are going to utilize so as a result of that what will happen as a result of that whenever you are placing the column i'll place the column so we'll place one column here after that you will place another column here then after that you will place i'm just randomly putting some column just to make you understand then he'll put another column somewhere here because you are not leaving any space so since you don't want to leave any space what we do when we prepare a plan and when we locate the column we just place the columns at the corners only okay so placing a column is not a problem for me but what happened i'm going to place a footing also so i'll place the footing so this is a footing what i'm going to wait yeah so this is one footing which will come here there's another footing which will come here then i have another footing which will come here so this way everywhere my footings are going to come okay so everywhere the footings are going to come so is this okay now everything is okay we don't have a problem because maybe whatever designing i have done based on that this is the size of the footing that i'm supposed to provide but what is happening since this was your plot boundary this is my plot boundary right and this much space whatever you have right this space what we have this is not your boundary it's your exactly neighboring plot wait yeah so this half of the footing which has gone it is not in your boundary it has gone in the neighboring plot so your neighbor is not so generous that he'll tell okay, okay no problem you do the footing in my plot nobody will tell they'll, they'll tell they cannot give you permission so what is happening here half of the footing has gone in your neighboring plot so you cannot go with this kind of footing actually it's a concentric footing only but you cannot go what is the solution for that the solution is that now we will try to bring our footing inside that means whatever size i had given no this size i'll bring it inside i'll put it like this okay i'll put it like this now what happened tell me indirectly i mean directly what happened i mean indirectly your footing has become a eccentric footing now getting my point all your footing has become eccentric footing why because you see the column cg is here footing cg is here column cg is here footing cg is here column cg is here footing cg is here so it's not matching so it becomes this kind of footing understood the concept yes so always remember the eccentric footing problem will come only in the small plot if you're working in a very big company we never use eccentric footing in a big companies because in big company they have to follow the bylaws else they'll not get the permission to do the construction and all this problem will come only in the small construction side because there the client doesn't want to uh, follow all the rules and all and sometimes the municipality people also they are not much concerned about it so in a, as a result of that what happens is this kind of eccentric footing comes in picture only in the small plot not in the bigger plot in bigger plot it will not come maybe some case it may come but you will do a designing according to that hmm? so this is a complete understanding about the eccentric footing now we'll try to understand what will happen now why there is so much uh, uh, i mean uh, problem in the eccentric footing you may ask sir why so much uh, importance is given for this what is happen okay it's okay no you took the footing inside now what is the problem the problem will start from now onwards so i hope this much understanding is clear yeah anyhow i'll cut okay i'll just take a screenshot of this so that i can utilize it in the next lecture yeah give me a minute so i hope the fundamental is clear in the next lecture i'll show you the calculation part so that you will be able to understand what exactly i wanted to convey okay so i've taken the picture of it let me paste it here and in the next lecture what i'll do is we'll start with the calculation part i'll explain you what will happen when you try to do the calculation for the eccentric footing okay so i'll see you back in the next lecture thank you